Hey, what's up guys? It's Derek here from Simonet Nutrition. And as a nutritionist who is heavily into fitness, into calisthenics, and who also works in a vitamin and supplement shop a few days a week, I get to observe a lot of things. I see a lot of trends. I see what people are doing to get results, to not get results. I see the sort of products that are returned, what sells a lot, what people are taking. I always ask how it's helped them or how it's affected their life. I get to see the vitamin C and oregano sales go up in the winter. Of course, the fat burners go up uh, in sales in the springtime, getting close to summer for that beach body. And it's actually pretty amazing that I get to see all this stuff, but it is very frustrating at the same time because I hear a lot of misinformation and I see a lot of people struggling to get the results because of that misinformation. So there's been a recent backlash against sugars and rightfully so. I mean, processed foods, sauces, drinks, they're all full of sugar and it is hiding everywhere. But the problem comes when people lump this processed food group of carbohydrates and, and crap and sugar into that giant group of carbs. And people get this in their mind that all carbs are bad for you. But as we all know, not all carbohydrates are the same. So I find a lot of people, they scrap things like dates and bananas after a workout in exchange for protein powders and water. And another thing I notice about these same people is that they're always looking for supplements to help them with recovery and for more energy. Duh. Yeah, your body is crying for glucose after a workout. This is our main cellular fuel. This is what helps to refuel our bodies, to help rebuild our muscles, to help replace the glycogen that we've used during workouts. This is something that needs to be done after a workout. Our body doesn't need just protein and water. So I have fueled myself in the mornings after workouts with a huge smoothie full of carbohydrates, six to 10 bananas, a handful of dates, mangoes, grapes, whatever I have. I throw in some flax and some hemp seeds and there you go. I've been doing this for well over a year and I'm as lean as I could ever wanna be. So the trick in my mind is keeping saturated fat and animal protein low. See, a lot of people say to me, oh, I wish I could eat carbs like that, but I would blow up or I would gain so much weight or I would get diabetes. Well, are they right? Is my physiology and my metabolism so different from theirs that I am just set up to burn carbohydrates and not turn them into fat? Am I this carb burning machine? Perhaps, but could it also be the foods that they're eating with carbs that give them this mindset? We have always been told to eat fat, to eat protein with carb rich meals to help blunt the spike in insulin. Is this true? Well, this study here that Dr. Michael Greger goes over explains that a little bit better. And it shows that it's not only carbohydrates that affect our blood sugar response. If you feed people mashed white potatoes, high glycemic food like white rice, this is how much insulin your pancreas has to pump out to keep your blood sugars in check. But what if you added some tuna fish? Tuna's got no carbs, no sugar, no starch. Wouldn't make a difference, right? Or maybe be even lower than the mashed potato spike by lowering the glycemic load of the whole meal. But instead, you get this. Twice the insulin spike. Right? Uh, same with white flour spaghetti and uh, white flour spaghetti with meat. The addition of animal protein makes the pancreas work twice as hard. You can do it with straight sugar water. If you do like a glucose challenge test to test for diabetes, where you drink a certain amount of sugar, this is the kind of spike in insulin you get. But if you take in the exact same amount of sugar, but with some meat added, you get this. And the more meat you add, the worse it gets. Just adding a little meat to carbs doesn't seem to do much, but once you get up to like a third of a chicken breast worth, you can elicit a significant increased surge of insulin. This may explain why those eating plant-based diets have such low diabetes rates, because animal protein can markedly potentiate the insulin secretion triggered by carbohydrate ingestion. So hopefully you guys learned something from this. Go eat a banana or six or eight, and quit worrying about it.